Hi friends. So in the last video, we've seen about uh, the overarching philosophy in a very simplistic way about mathematics and certain skills that we want to develop in the child. Now in this video, we'll talk about certain simple strategies to keep in mind when we take our mathematics live classes. It's important that uh, now that you've decided your chapter, you've gone through the content, you love the chapter, you love your mathematics, you know it well. Now it's a different ball game to be able to, uh, you know, impart that learning, that knowledge, that skill set into the child. Now it's very easy to, you know, take up the chapter and, you know, from your NCERT, whatever you've chosen, see it from Khan Academy as a reference and, you know, go by that structure. That's okay, but what we need to understand is that um, there are concepts and, uh, you know, there are application of those concepts in terms of problem solving, the sum that we have. The most critical part is how are you going to introduce those concepts? How are you going to explain those concepts? The point is that the child is least interested in knowing that concept, that bare raw concept in terms of the definition, in terms of a formula, in terms of its meaning. Okay, It doesn't matter to the child. He wants to actually, uh, you know, learn something that, you know, he can associate with. It only makes sense to him once he associates. Also, it depends about what age group, you know, you're teaching. If it's one to five, that kind of, uh, you know, the kind of association level the child wants and expects is much high. But from sixth, seventh onwards, the child is ready for purely abstract, you know, uh, you know, knowledge that is imparted to him. But by and large, let's follow this, uh, you know, that we need to be able to, uh, you know, introduce those concepts in a, in a very, um, you know, non-traditional way. We need, we can think about stories, we can think about, um, you know, relating to real life examples. Um, you know, let's say if you're talking about circles and, you know, talk about, you know, circles we see around, talk about, you know, clocks, talk about. Uh, you know, the Ferris wheel, talk about, if you talk about angles, talk about scissors, talk about examples in real life. When we're talking about a line segment, talk about poles and pencils. When we're talking about fractions, you know, you'll see that even textbooks talk about real life examples of, uh, you know, breaking up a chapati or, you know, uh, breaking up some, you know, a, a food item. When we talk about sectors, look at the sectors, circular sectors when you slice up an orange. You know, that's how the child, uh, you know, gets engaged and interested in you know, in the in the formal mathematics. Also, it's important that at the beginning, we don't start with the definition. The child has to be far away from this, you know, you know, concept. He needs to, in terms of the formality, in terms of, uh, you know, the structure, you can introduce it, have fun with it, make the child, uh, you know, get in, you know, make him interested in that concept uh, through whatever, through your stories, examples, illustrations, demonstrations, video, whatever. And once that is achieved, then at the end when the child is familiar, will you formalize it with a definition? It should, the definition and the idea and the formal structure should be arrived at rather than just feeding it to the child and moving on to problem solving its application. So as I mentioned in the last video, it's about concrete to abstract and abstract to symbols and then the manipulation. We generally straight away take him to the symbols and we start manipulating and we feel that problem solving is what mathematics is all about. No, it's about seeing the patterns and generalizing them and then putting it into concise structure of logic and then giving it, you know, symbols. So don't miss that beautiful journey. Um, arrive at those definitions through discussions, through questions. So that is something you need to be very careful about. And... Um, Important thing is that once you have reached a stage where the child is familiar with the concept, has a very clear meaning about the concepts, is can you know differentiate between similar concepts, then you move on to the symbols to ensure that behind the symbols, whatever meaning and the ideas are there is very clear to the child. As I mentioned in the last video, it's like a language. Me and you talk a lot in our uh, in, in English or any other language, so we become very familiar, but mathematics is something we don't communicate much and whatever we communicate we communicate with symbols so the child has to be and the symbols are not used very regularly so his practice is also very important and behind the practice is clarity of concept is important so ensure that when you are using symbols you don't forget that the child should know or will know no it's okay ask him he may not have a very clear idea about those symbols the students even find it difficult to you know sometimes uh, 
explain the meaning behind a fraction if it's 3 by 5 they sometimes don't know what is that 3 by 5 it's they fumble in explaining that you have to cut something into five parts and from those five parts three parts is what i have you know that's how uh, you know it can get you know difficult at times even if it's that basic it may be simple for you and me but not for the child so keep all those things in mind so uh, yeah and uh, important thing is that after every session you in when you start the next session please revise on the concepts that you have taken in the last class from the informal introduction to the scenarios and the stories you lead the child to a formal structure and from there you revise it in the next class and then comes an important aspect of problem solving wherein the child is has to apply those concepts so this is how your journey should be of the concepts and then the child has to synthesize all of these concepts for which you are there to guide him to be able to synthesize all of these concepts and then maybe you know give a course and test which is for the child's application of concepts the child feels uh, stimulated challenged also revises so that as i mentioned math is a progressive progr progression based subject where everything is built on top of each other so once that knowledge is fit into his uh, you know as co those concepts are quite clear and you know they make some permanent space in his head is he ready for the next step so this is how math progresses and if you're taking up any chapter ensure uh, since it's progression based sometimes the child may have doubts regarding the previous concepts help him with that keep uh, in mind this entire journey and ensure that you keep it as informal as re related as much as possible to concrete and then reach your abstract and then the symbols and then clarity of those symbols and the ideas behind them and then your problem solving and application thanks